Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I am Andrea Ackerman, and I am the Horticulture Outreach Specialist for um, Brown County. With me today, I have Janelle Ware, um, Horticulture Outreach Specialist from Marathon and Wood Counties. So we'll be your moderators for today. Uh, please use the Q&A feature to ask your questions. You should be able to find this at the bottom of your screen. So if you're on a laptop, um, it should be in the at the bottom of your screen there. And if you're using a cell phone or tablet, you might have to tap the screen to bring up the menu with the Q&A feature. So just give that a try and find that function to um, put your questions in there. So we'll get to as many questions as we can. Uh, we are not using the chat feature for questions. Questions. So just as a reminder, please put them in that Q&A feature. We are recording this webinar and the link to the recording will be posted to the Extension Horticulture website at a later date. So um, now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, uh, Lisa Johnson, Horticulture Educator for Dane County. She'll be presenting on best practices for watering yards and gardens. All right, Lisa, take it away. Thanks so much. Uh, just a quick check, making sure everybody can see my slides okay. Just somebody let me know that they're up. Yep, they look good, Lisa. Excellent, thank you. Okay, well, um, watering is like one of the most important things that you can do to have a successful garden, and it's actually more detailed than you might think. So we're going to talk about a number of different facets of watering today. Uh, this is kind of an overview of the presentation. So we'll first of all give you some general guidance and helpful tips. And then we'll talk about how to know when to water because it isn't always immediately um, visible. And we'll talk about proper watering technique, time of day to water, and then we'll finally finish up with some water saving techniques, such as improving your soil, mulching and using uh, drip irrigation or other types of um, micro irrigation. Okay, so we'll start out with the uh, sort of general guidance. And that is that most plants that are established that are in average soil and by average soil, I'm calling that kind of a clay to silt loam, um, those plants are going to need about an inch of water a week. And plants in sandier soils, though, may need uh, two inches of water a week or more. So it's helpful to start out by having just a rain gauge, a very simple piece of equipment that will measure what Mother Nature is giving you. And if Mother Nature gives you an inch of water a week, you're good to go. But, you know, many times we... Uh, have either too much or uh, not enough. Another little tip is to when you put your gardens together, make sure that you group plants together that have similar uh, water needs so that you're not like putting a sedum that doesn't need much water next to an a still be that does need a lot of water. Some more tips, uh, landscape plants, your trees and shrubs, when they're newly planted, they're gonna need about two inches of water a week in that average soil. They might need three inches a week, perhaps in sandy soil. And that's through the first two years. This is an interesting piece of equipment here that uh, you might find helpful. Um, I'm not advocating this particular brand, but it just happens to be the one that I'm familiar with. And the Ross root feeder is attached to a hose and then it has um, a little gauge on it that you can adjust the flow. What happens is the water will come out of the hose, go down this um, aluminum or it's, it's a metal uh, shaft. And then there are little holes at the end and the end is also pointed. So you jam that into the ground and then you adjust the flow. You don't want it to be blasting, but it can help get the water down into the root system when you have a newly planted tree or shrub that has a fairly deep root system. And it can be really helpful on uh, slopes, you know, so that the water isn't all running off. Another thing to think about on slopes is your soil berm. And you can see that with the 
um, dogwood here that they've built up kind of a saucer. You want that saucer, if you're on a slope, to be higher at the downhill end so that when you put your water in and it's soaking in, that it doesn't just all roll downhill, that you have it high enough at the bottom end. And you can also maybe want to invest in these. Uh, this particular brand is a tree gator, but there are also ones called tree diapers. There are ones that look kind of like a donut. Basically, you fill them with water and the water will slowly uh, percolate out through that over time. Now, the things that need checking for water the most are uh, things that are in containers because you have a limited root zone, limited amount of soil. And as you go through the season, the roots grow and then you have even less soil available. So you want to make sure that you're checking those uh, often, particularly hanging baskets because they're surrounded by air on all sides, uh, unlike things that are in the ground or that are planted in a raised bed uh, or even containers, um, which at least have a base on the ground. Your hanging baskets are air all the way around. So you do need to uh, check those at least every other day um, during the late spring. And then once you get into summer, I'd recommend checking them every day. I often will kind of heft them and see how heavy they feel uh, in order to gauge how much I need to water them. And when you do water, make sure that the water runs all the way through so you know you've gotten the whole soil profile wet. Uh, lawns, newly seeded lawns, you need to water them daily until they start to germinate. And then you can often cut back to a couple of times a week once they're looking at, about like they look in the, the picture. Now your established lawns though only need about an inch a week and they can tolerate a couple of weeks with um, drought situation. Um, usually it might take even a little bit more than three weeks before you actually have damage. Yes, they will go dormant, but they should uh, come back once the rains start again. But if you're not planning to let them go dormant, then watch for footprinting, which is when you walk on the lawn, you can see your footprints afterwards or kind of a bluish color as opposed to a nice healthy green color to uh, be able to give you an idea of when you should water. Vegetable gardens, those should be checked a couple of times a week, maybe more in raised beds, especially towards the middle or end of the season and for crops that need more water. I think that uh, drip irrigation is really handy for a lot of vegetable gardens. So it might be something you might want to invest in and we will talk about that in just a minute. Another thing that you might want to invest in, and these are, you know, maybe 15 bucks, maybe 10, depending on where you get them from. This can be really handy to check the moisture three to four inches down, which is where your roots are. Uh, of course, you can also use this very um, important tool, your finger, um, to stick into the ground and do the same thing. And some meters are really fancy, like they will tell you uh, for different types of plants when to water, um, particularly for uh, house plants, they'll tell you. And uh, I've already mentioned for vegetable gardens that um, drip is helpful, but an organic mulch in vegetable gardens is also really helpful to conserve water, keep the soil nice and cool and moist. Now here's the thing about wilting. Ideally, we want to uh, water before we see wilting, but just because the plant is wilting doesn't necessarily mean the cause is uh, what we would call dry soil or lack of water. Um, often uh, plants will wilt from heat. Uh, we used to see that back when I worked at Feli's Greenhouse with our impatience baskets. When the weather would get hot like it is here today, uh, and is going to be most of the week when it's in the 80s. Sometimes the plants will give off water faster than they can pull it up in the soil. So even if the soil is soaked, the plants are uh, wilted because they just, they can't keep up with that demand. Now you can, if you have like a, a container or a hanging basket, you can just quickly spritz it over with water um, that may help that wilting a little bit, but usually the plants will recover from that as soon as the heat passes. So what you don't want to do is overwater stuff. 
um, just because it's wilting. So check what the soil feels like if you see that wilting symptom. Um, you can, because you can also have it from root rot from too much water uh, because that plugs up the roots and they're not able to absorb water. So you might see that symptom because plants have been overwatered. And you might see it in containers because um, the, there's just not enough um, soil around the roots to be able to keep up with water demand. And also it can happen with other vascular diseases or even in the vegetable garden with uh, squash vine borer. Um, for perennials and annuals, I really recommend a watering wand. It's a great way to water. Uh, if it's very dry, I water for a six to eight uh, count and then um, get back uh, to the next plant. And make sure it's getting through your, wa your uh, wood chips too, if you have wood chips. Big thing, water at the base of the plant, not on the leaves. Um, and that will help eliminate fungal diseases. Uh, also, sprinklers are not great, but they are the best way to water lawns. And in lawns, speaking of lawns, um, if you aren't sure if you've put down an inch, you can use a tuna can or a cat food can, uh, buy your sprinkler to, and when it gets, you know, because they're about an inch tall, when it fills up, then you know you've gotten there. And you can mark your faucet and your hose bib with pieces of tape or a permanent marker so that you know what pressure to set it at and how long to water um, once you find out that your can is full. And that'll help you for the next time, just lining up those two marks. With uh, trees, people often ask, you know, where do I water and how much? Keep in mind that 90% of a tree's root system is in the upper 12 inches and that tree roots can spread three to five times the height of the tree. So at bare minimum, you want to water here under the root zone, under the, uh, or sorry, the drip line of the tree canopy. And you can use that tuna can method again, if you want to, uh, but with trees, because we wanna make sure that we soak the root zone, wait a couple hours after you've gotten that inch and see how far down it got. If it didn't get very far down, you may want to water again. And um, you, you can do that by you know, digging a hole and checking six to nine inches down. Ideally, you wanna water in the morning so that your plants have plenty of time to dry off because one of the best ways to get fungal diseases is to water in the evening or late afternoon so that the plants stay wet overnight. Uh, that makes fungal diseases really happy and it's uh, easy to have outbreaks with that. Also, you don't want to water in the midday when it's super hot because you tend to lose a lot uh, to evaporation. So ideally in the morning. I realize I work uh, just the same as a lot of you and you may not have uh, much of an option, but water as soon as you get home uh, as early as you can. Okay, now we'll go into some um, techniques to help with watering. So one thing to do is to improve your soil. You can improve the water holding capacity of your soil by adding organic matter. And that works, the beauty of it is it works if you have sandy soil, it works if you have really heavy clay soil. By adding that organic matter and working it in, um, that will help both to improve drainage and also to uh, help with water holding capacity in sandy soils. Um, now, if you have compacted clay soils, one trick you might wanna use is to plant daikon radishes, which are also called tillage radishes. And you can get those from seed and they will actually drill through that nasty compacted soil and leave channels when they die over the winter. So you just leave them in over the winter and then you clean up the debris uh, in spring and you will find that all of these holes have been drilled. You can add organic matter at that time uh, and you can um, till the soil as well. Um, mulching, I mentioned I was gonna talk about mulching. So important and so important to do it right. This is not right in the picture. Uh, this is what we call volcano mulching, folks. The trunk does not need mulch. It is the roots that you want to protect. So 
You only need your mulch to be about two to three inches thick and it should not be touching the uh, trunk of the tree at all. Uh, also, just a little caution, if you buy mulch during really hot weather, if it's come from the center of the pile at the vendor's place, it can sometimes be what we call sour mulch. It'll smell kind of weird um, and it can produce methane and ammonia and other things. If that's what's happened to you, spread it out, let it cool, and when you apply it, um, make sure to water it in well so that you leach those things away. Landscape plants, I usually recommend shredded bark mulch. Uh, there are many different types of bark mulch out there. Uh, again, make sure it's not right up against the stem of the plants. And in the middle of the summer, sometimes it can get hydrophobic uh, and sheet water off. For vegetable gardens, clean straw or um, marsh hay is good. And again, don't put it right up against the plants. And drip irrigation, um, those systems will use up 50% less water than conventional sprinklers. There are lots of different kinds. And I'm going to give you a resource right here at the Dane County Extension Teaching Garden site. And there's a nice fact sheet on different kinds of drip irrigation. And you can decide which one is best for your particular crops. But drip line, drip hose are all really great for vegetable gardens. And this is what that uh, web page looks like. So you can just search for Dane County Extension Teaching Garden. Okay, takeaways. Um, most herbaceous plants need an inch of water a week. Newly planted ones may need more. Different plants need different techniques. Water at the base of the plant, not the leaves. Be careful not to over or under water. And be sure and mulch, great way to help with your water needs. Water thoroughly and allow plants to, uh, to dry except for germinating lawn seed. And keep in mind that wilting may need, mean different things, so investigate that. Okay, ready for questions. Hi, Hi Lisa. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for all of that information. Um, why don't we do have quite a few questions. Why don't we get started with how effective are self-watering containers? Yeah, so self-watering containers are ones that often have something like a wick system in it that will wick the water up from a um, uh, some kind of reservoir down below and bring it up into the soil. It's kind of the same idea as those water globes um, but it's coming from the bottom instead of from the top. Um, those can be very effective. The thing that you need to watch out for is not planting something that is going to um, grow so big that it's going to overwhelm the water uh, capacity of that system. In your research, do you find that household softened water is bad for watering outdoors? Um, or how about using a tap mounted outside of the house? Okay, you should never use so uh, softened water for watering plants. Uh, softened water has various salts in it that are uh, not good for plant growth. It's particularly bad for house plants because they only have a little volume of soil to deal with and, you know, they can't explore any further into any surrounding soil. So softened water, whether indoors or outdoors, I don't um, recommend. Um, if you have only softened water in your house, um, you may want to look into rain barrels or some other way of um, watering your plants, maybe using your waters um, uh, down in, in your basement, your dehumidifier, you, you could use that uh, for water if that's um, your issue. Okay, well that kind of brings us right to another question. Um, is rainwater off the roof into the rain barrel safe for a vegetable garden? We don't recommend that for vegetable gardens. It's fine for landscape beds, but when you have water that's flowing across asphalt shingles uh, and through a uh, gutter system that may or may not be particularly clean, I've found uh, 
good chipmunks and you know I've seen like little plants growing in people's uh, gutters. So there can be, you know, nasty stuff up there. If you have a black walnut tree, for example, where the water is sheeting off the leaves and the, um, well, the whole plant, um, you can get trace amounts of the black walnut toxin on your roof, into your gutter, into your rain barrel. So that is um, something to think about for the siting of your, uh, or whether you should have a rain barrel or not, if you have a tree like that around. But in general, the asphalt does have various chemicals in it that we don't want ending up in your vegetable garden, but it should be fine to use for your landscape beds. Let's stick with the vegetable gardens for a bit. Um, I use our questioner, our, our attendee says, I use mounds in my vegetable garden. Do plants planted above the ground line need more than one inch per water per week usually? You know, uh, that's an excellent question. It's going to partly depend on the crop and it is also going to depend on what you used for your layers and how well that material retains water. Um, you might want to get a water meter and uh, that will help you to answer that question. But, you know, it could be something like, okay, if you have carrots, they don't use quite as much water as a tomato or, or a pepper or something like that. So that may need more than that inch of water in that system. Uh, mounds are great because, um, you know, they, they warm up faster. They, uh, they're not going to be compacted. Um, you know, it's a great way to grow things, but it is, as you know, raised, so it may dry out a little bit faster. Um, I've got uh, this one. How about we overwintered garlic bulbs? When should we begin watering those and how much should we water? Okay, um, so you've overwintered the bulbs. I, I'm not sure that the, whether the person planted them in pots or whether they are planning on planting them this year um, as bulbs. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe if you could explain if, I, let's pretend like, or assume first that they planted, when they said overwintered, what they meant was they planted them last year. Okay. And then let's assume that they've overwintered them in containers, like a planted container also. Okay. All right. Um, if it's a planted container, as soon as you see growth, you should start watering if it's in ground, same thing. As soon as you see growth, you should start watering those. Uh, if they are bulbs, uh, ideally they should be planted in the fall, um, but I'm not sure how well they will survive the whole year uh, without being planted. So you might have to plant them in the spring. Um, one more about the vegetable garden. Um, for the moment, how about mulch and um, using sawdust in the vegetable garden as a mulch? Okay, um, you need to make sure, first of all, what is the source of your sawdust? You don't want it to be walnut wood or hickory wood uh, or anything like that that might have uh, juglone toxin in it. Um, I'm not a big fan of sawdust because it is so high in carbon and it tends to mess with the carbon nitrogen ratio in the soil. It also tends to form a crust on the top and then the water just sheets off. Um, if you had a lot and you really wanted to use it, I would mix it with soil uh, and apply it that way as uh, a mulch. And you might also need to add extra nitrogen again because of that high, high carbon content uh, when the microbes start breaking that down, um, you need to uh, supply extra nitrogen so that they can do that. And you should not use fresh sawdust either. It should be composted for a year. I've got some questions about sources of water for um, watering. So first, how about using lake water for watering gardens? Um, as long as you don't have like a major blue-green algae problem, um, that should be fine. Um, and I've got a couple questions regarding that, quite a few questions regarding the irrigation system. Um, 
would you be able to um, share with us where you found that information? Or if you could back up on the slide, um, then one of us could put the, the link in the, in the chat. While you're doing that, I'm going to ask one more um, question regarding source of water. How about water from in, uh, water from a dehumidifier? Yeah, that's actually fine to use. It's it's coming out of the air, uh, so it shouldn't have any um, any problems with it. I've used that during drought situations. I was like, I've got several gallons of water here that I don't have to take out of my hose, so I hauled it upstairs and. Uh, that does that does work. Um, back to the vegetable garden. If the daikon radishes are planted, is tilling required in the spring? I have a square. I have square bed frames set on the soil, and I don't till them. Yeah, with a raised bed, you should not need to till. The um, daikon radishes, uh, I mentioned in case somebody has compacted soil or super heavy clay, they are a good way to um, break up that soil. Now they will leave channels where the roots die. Uh, so you can either you know, dust over that with um, some compost, but ideally you would do both. You would add some compost and do um, some tilling. Uh, but that's for an in-ground situation, not for a raised bed. And with raised beds, usually you're going to have some like potting soil mixed with uh, topsoil so that it doesn't get too heavy for the bed. I do usually, um, I, you know, turn over the soil in my raised beds, um, but it's so much fluffier than what's uh, in ground. Um, you wouldn't have to do anything much to it. Let's talk about natives. Should I follow the same watering guidelines with Wisconsin, Wisconsin native plants and flowers? Depends on the plant. Uh, if we're talking woodland plants versus prairie plants um, and also how long they've been in the ground. For an established prairie plant, it can probably get away uh, for you know, a couple of weeks without any uh, supplemental water. And many of them can go even longer than that. That's the beauty of prairie plants is that they have super long root systems that are very efficient at harvesting uh, water way down into the soil. So a lot of people don't water their established native gardens at all during the season. Um, you kind of have to watch though and see if you see any wilting. If you do see wilting, then certainly do feel free to give them some water. But if it's a newer planting of natives, then I would recommend the one inch at least for the first you know, year or maybe even two until they do get well established. And if we're talking about woodland uh, plants, those are going to need uh, more water than the prairie plants. How about woody ornamentals? We've got somebody that's asking about, um, they just planted a climbing rose, but I'm going to guess that generally your woody ornamentals are going to have similar watering needs, right? So how often if you just planted, not the established stuff, but the just planted stuff, how often do they need to be watered? At least once a week. Um, and I usually recommend an average soil for a woody plant. Uh, about two inches of water a week if it's just been planted. Uh, and you know, you'll have to uh, check that and evaluate if you're getting um, water from mother nature, you might not need to water that much. Uh, if you're in a sandier soil, um, you might even need to water more than that two inches. You just wanna make sure that the uh, soil is moist at, at least three or four inches down, but you don't wanna have water standing in the hole either. It's really, it's, you know, I wish I could give you a cookie cutter response on that one, but it's gonna depend on the type of plant. Roses do need a lot of water. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for spending some time with us today and get, helping us uh, get prepared for um, a, a very successful year and 
kind of wrapping our heads around the proper water um, techniques that we should be doing in our gardens and our lawns. I also want to take a moment and say thank you, Andrea, for co-moderating this with me. Um, and wanted to mention a recording will be posted at the horticulture website. Thanks again, everybody, for taking some time with us today. Have a wonderful day.